I'm pleased to be speaking with you today at the M Ontario Climate Change and Asset Management Conference. I know it's been said before, but it has truly been an unprecedented year, not only in Ontario, but around the world. I believe what we've been through has demonstrated what we've known all along. That reliable, well-maintained, modern infrastructure is a key to the health and well-being of all the residents of our cities, towns, rural and Indigenous communities. I would like to share with you some of the ways the Ministry of Infrastructure is working to help update and improve municipal infrastructure. And how we're adapting to support municipalities so that together we can meet the challenges brought on by COVID-19. First, the government is encouraged that several municipalities have made significant progress on their asset management plans and in meeting municipal asset management planning regulation deadlines. At the same time, the Ontario government understands that some municipalities are also experiencing challenges in trying to meet these timelines for a variety of reasons. With that in mind, that is why I made sure we took the steps needed to extend the remaining deadlines for asset management plans by one year. This includes the deadline for phase two of the regulatory timeline, which was originally set for this July. This extension came into effect as of March 15, 2021. In addition to this change, we are ensuring that we support municipal efforts to build or upgrade local infrastructure. A key element of the Ontario government's plan is investment in infrastructure, including strategic investments in roads, bridges, transit, schools, hospitals and broadband. Ontario's planned investments over the next 10 years total $145.4 billion, including $16.9 billion in 2021-22. We want to help communities across Ontario recover from the impacts of COVID-19 and build the foundation for long-term prosperity. The Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, also known as ICIP, is also contributing up to $30 billion in total project funding in communities across Ontario over 10 years. This includes over $10.2 billion from the Ontario government. Part of this infrastructure investment is supporting a range of water, wastewater and stormwater system improvements in Ontario's communities under ICIP's green infrastructure stream. And it is at the local level where it matters most. For example, in February, Ontario announced an investment of more than $1.7 million to both upgrade the water treatment plant in Red Rock and replace numerous water mains and sewers in Terrace Bay. These investments will support better environmental protection in Red Rock, improve service reliability and reduce maintenance costs in Terrace Bay. Ontario is also providing almost $940,000 to the municipality of Tweed to create an additional 2.8 hectares of wastewater storage and upgrade a lagoon aeration system. This will help Tweed meet current standards for wastewater treatment while reducing wastewater overflows to help keep waterways clean and protect fish habitats. We continue to support our community's green efforts through these types of local infrastructure investments. And I also know that Ontario municipalities are hard at work on their own initiatives. And in fact, I hear that as some municipalities work to meet the amended regulation, they are using it as an opportunity to integrate their long range financial and capital planning and the planning of certain infrastructure related climate resilience initiatives. This is ter a terrific development. I know that being able to pivot and find new solutions to meet major challenges is a vital skill. We as a government often find ourselves in this situation. For example, as the challenges brought on by COVID-19 progressed, we recognize the need for flexibility. That's why ICIP now includes a new COVID-19 resilience infrastructure stream to address COVID-19 challenges with over $1 billion in joint federal provincial funding. Investments will help communities to build or renovate health and safety related projects in long-term care, education and municipalities and help Ontario respond to the impacts of COVID-19. Minister Lecce and I recently announced over $650 million for COVID-19 projects in schools in all school boards across the province. The local government COVID stream 
which we hope to announce in the coming months with the federal government includes up to $250 million to help municipalities. In addition to extended deadlines for asset management plans, we understand that municipalities are asking for greater flexibility in the way they use funding from the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, also known as OSIF. On January 25th, Ontario announced nearly $200 million in OSIF funding for municipalities for 2021. This stable funding addresses local critical infrastructure needs and helps our municipal partners plan their budgets. And this funding is especially important as municipalities continue to experience financial strain and reallocate resources due to COVID-19. We also continue to work with AMO and Ontario's municipalities on the development of a refocused OSIF. The Ministry has retained a consultant to support a review of OSIF and the process will include consultations with AMO and municipalities. And I assure you that we are listening and we will make continual program improvements that make things easier for municipalities. We're working hard to make smart infrastructure investments through the COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Stream and other streams and investment programs. And we're taking action to provide municipalities with flexibility where possible, such as providing asset management deadline extension to help municipalities successfully complete their asset management plans within the new timeframes. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, so Trevor Fleck is the Director of Infrastructure Program Policy Branch at the Ministry of Infrastructure. He is here today and has kindly agreed to answer um, prepared questions on behalf of the Ministry. The Infrastructure Program Policy Branch is responsible for developing and monitoring municipal infrastructure policy, including municipal asset management planning. The branch oversees Ontario Regulation 588-17 and funding programs like the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund. All right, Trevor, you're up. Uh, we have some questions for you. So the first question is, how does the ministry assess the effectiveness of municipalities' asset management plans? Thanks, it's, uh, it's good to be here. I'm looking forward to answering some of these questions. Glad the minister's presentation uh, worked as smoothly as it did. Um, so the first question about how do we assess the efficacy of municipal municipalities asset management plans. So I guess there's a, a couple of things uh, going on with the ministry right now that um, impact this. So, and part of this is we've just given the timeline extensions under the asset management planning regulation. Um, that's intended to allow municipalities to complete their asset management plans while they're addressing the local priorities that have been shifted around with um, the recent COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, the regulation is now being phased in over a seven year period from 2019 to 2025. So that's gonna give more time to meet the remaining requirements. And as the minister said, the next phase will come into effect mm -hmm. July 1st, 2022. Uh, and in terms of how we assess the effectiveness of municipalities uh, asset management planning. Part of what we do under the regulation itself and through some of our other programming is have the ability to conduct random audit checks, looking at compliance um, with the asset management regulation. And through that process, municipalities would be assessed on whether they've met all of the components outlined in the appropriate phase of the regulation. The other part that the minister mentioned as well is we have um, an ongoing review of the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund. And part of that is about making sure that funding through ISIF is going to where it's needed most and that municipalities are able to use that funding to address their identified infrastructure priorities. So through that review process, we're hoping to see how asset management planning and the distribution and municipalities decisions with um, OSIF funding can combine to improve infrastructure outcomes at the municipal level. Um, and sorry, the, uh, you know, the goal here is to make sure municipalities are equipped with up-to-date asset management plans 
that align with the regulation and over time we'll see greater standardization and consistent data collection, all of which is important to making the right infrastructure investments in the right places and at the right time. Great. All right, for the second question, um, based on the asset management plans the ministry has received, has the ministry identified opportunities around how these plans can be strengthened? So one of the primary goals of the regulation is to get a better understanding of the infrastructure challenges municipalities face and to improve the standardization and consistency of asset management and planning information. And the data collected will help the province and municipalities collaboratively address structural challenge and better target funding resources and financing tools. What we found um, in 2018 was that 99% of Ontario municipalities had some type of asset management plan, but the level of detail and the quality of underlying data very significantly. So it's very difficult to assess one asset management plan against another. We're also hearing from municipalities that there's big differences in how they're able to integrate their asset management planning and their asset management data into their decision-making, um, including uh, supporting their fiscal mm -hmm. plans. So I think as we go through the implementation of the regulation, we'll really be looking at how the consistency, the quality and the integration of asset management planning um, evolves across municipalities. And really the July 1st, 2022 timeline is the first opportunity for us to look at standardized asset management plans, um, at least for core economic infrastructure. Great, thanks for answering that. Um, so for the third question, how are reporting requirements from different ministries aligned to support integrated outcomes around climate change and asset management planning? I think this was a, a great question about how to um, how are municipalities bringing together um, the requirements from a range of different ministries, um, mm -hmm. people coming at this from maybe slightly different perspectives. And for us, this is this is an important part of the risk management work that municipalities need to consider when they're doing their planning. So the impact of climate change is one of those risks and in the asset management planning regulation we have requirements for municipalities to consider actions that may be required to address the impacts of climate change on infrastructure and to consider opportunities to undertake adaptation and mitigation. So the regulation requires municipalities to reflect those considerations. It also provides flexibility on how this can be accomplished. Just reflecting the, the varying capacities across municipalities and trying to reflect um, the fact that priorities will, will be slightly different uh, depending on location. So the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks has also developed guidance materials for municipalities on how the impacts of climate change can be considered as part of environmental assessment. And then their guide um, it outlines how to consider adaptation and mitigation strategies when planning for infrastructure investments. And the regulation also includes a requirement for municipalities to align with any relevant financial plans prepared under the Safe Drinking Water Act. And a financial plan under that act contains financial projections relating to the operation of the drinking water system, while the asset management plan should include information on the expected levels of service, the asset managed strategy and the financial strategy for all infrastructure assets. And all of that um, is also supported by the categories within the financial information return system, which is created by the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing as a helpful way for municipalities to organize their asset management plans. So I think, you know, in, in sum, we're trying to provide support for municipalities in looking at these risks. We're trying to provide flexibility and how they integrate it into their asset management planning and trying to ensure through the regulation and through coordination with other ministries that these things are, are mutually reinforcing. That's great. Thanks so much, Trevor. Um, all right, for our last question, 
How is the integration of green infrastructure uh, and natural assets with asset management planning being supported through the province infrastructure plan programs? programs? So this is, this is one that I think we're seeing an increasing amount of discussion around and it's part of conversations that we're having with not just our partner ministries, but we're also seeing some increased emphasis on this from the federal government. And we expect that will impact the federal provincial programs for infrastructure uh, going forward. In terms of our own asset management regulation, we've really been encouraging municipal planning for climate change resilience assets. So in the first phase where municipalities were um, asked to develop asset management strategies, they were also asked to incorporate actions that would be required to address vulnerabilities caused by climate change, as well as adaptation and mitigation measures that could be taken into their policies. The regulation defines uh, green infrastructure assets, but again, trying to balance the the directiveness of the regulation and ensuring that people do move towards standard um, levels of practice in asset management planning, but leaving flexibility for municipalities um, around how they address specific issues. So the regulation leaves the strategy to incorporate green infrastructure assets to municipalities to follow generally accepted good engineering practices trying not to overdefine things, but to, to set out specific areas that municipalities should be considering when they're doing their asset management planning. Great, thanks so much, Trevor, for your informative responses.